Amen. God is good. God is good. If you got your Bibles tonight, Matthew chapter number 12 and verse 18. Matthew 12 and 18. I'll tell you what, I got so plumb excited studying for tonight. I almost overshot the runway and I, I looked at the clock and I'm like, oh, I got to get to church. I was just, man, I, I, I was going to have enough scripture to choke a horse by the time I got finished with it. So, And if I'd have preached everything that's on my mind, I'd probably be hoarse when I got finished. So maybe I'd just choke myself. All right. Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall not break, and the smoking flax shall not be quenched till he send forth judgment. Everybody say judgment. Unto victory, everybody say victory. victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. I ask you to help us, Lord. Give me strength tonight. In Jesus' name, anoint me one more time. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Ah, skip that one. Let's go to Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and peace, there shall be no end. Everybody say increase. There shall be no end to the increase of his government and peace. Upon the throne of David and upon the kingdom, upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment. Everybody say judgment. And with justice from henceforth forevermore. The zeal, everybody say zeal, of the Lord will perform this. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to talk to us tonight, move in our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Anoint us in Jesus' name. Amen. I think I already prayed over the message. We pray again. Ain't nothing wrong with praying again. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus. The scripture I kind of flew over and I skipped it was Matthew 1 and 23. Simply was a repeat of the prophecy. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, shall be, be with child. A virgin shall be with child and shall uh, bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which being interpreted is God with us. Now, there's no prize for this, but somebody jump on your feet and give me the definition of the word name in that scripture. Anybody, 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 anybody. Title? Uh, you got the feet right, she got the answer right. <laughs> Authority. Now, y'all know that. So let's look at this scripture again. A virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his authority God with us. Oh, hang on, let me get out of the way while you run the aisles. I'm sorry. Okay, I got me spinning my chair around at the desk. Maybe I'll, let me just, let me work on this a little bit. When we have God with us. We have the authority of God 
with us through the birth of Jesus Christ and through the power of God's Spirit coming on the inside of us when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You are infilled with God. You don't walk by yourself. God is with you. His authority works in you. I have to dig a little deeper. This is good. It really is. I mean, I, I, I thought that would be the end of the service right there. We'd just be shouting, dancing, running the aisles because, you know what, the, how many of y'all realize what's greater than God? So if you have the authority of God working in you, what's your problem? It's been a long day. We're tired. Okay, that's all right. I'm working with you. You have no problems because you have God working on the inside. You see, when you submit yourself unto God through repentance and the desire of the Holy Ghost, you affiliate yourself with Him in His realm. There's nothing greater than His realm because He made everything that you've ever seen, known, or understand. And He has the authority over all of that. And we're talking about victories in His name. In your life, you have had victories in His name. This church has had victories in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the name of Jesus. There's power. There's authority. When we get into His authority, when we recognize that there is victory in Him, we have overcoming power. You, each and every one of you here, at one point or another, in some way or another, has experienced victory in the authority of God Almighty. God has come to you. He has not left you comfortless. He has given you His Spirit that you might have Him with you at all times. Now, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So there's some of us sometimes that we are not stable because we are off on our own road. But when we are in the kingdom, when we are desiring the kingdom, when we are seeking the kingdom, the Bible says that we have not a high priest that cannot be approached. We can come to God with the hurts and the strife and the problems of our life, and He can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. I'm going to help you out a little bit this tonight. You see, the authority, Jesus was in the house. House was full. Doctors, lawyers, Pharisees, etc. of the law. The Bible says the, the roof was opened up. They let down a man inside, of the, inside the house. And he looked at him and said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Y'all have heard me say this before. I'm just going to go through it again. He looked around and he knew the heart of the Pharisees. They're like, Who are you? He looked at him and said, I know your heart. Is it easier for me to say, Thy son, sins be forgiven thee, or rise up and walk? The results are the same. He said, but I said this because of the hardness of your heart, that you would understand that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He came with authority. God has the authority to remove sin. The Bible says in Romans, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Christ Jesus. Through Jesus Christ our Lord to give the exact quote. So the authority of God on the earth is to give life. How many of y'all realize people are constantly trying to escape life? Some dumb drug addict, some dumb alcoholic, some dumb this, some dumb that. They do all of these crazy things to escape life. They're not escaping life. They're really trying to escape death. Say that again. You get some dude, go get high on pot. He's not trying to escape life. He's trying to find life. How many of you realize there's no life in drugs? There's no life. I mean, I have just somebody just said a couple days ago, uh, overdosed on drugs. 
Why? Because they were not pleased with life. Well, they weren't living in the first place. That's the problem. They were trying to escape death, but you realize there is no escape from death except for the remission of sin. You see, sin is the culprit that is stealing life from us. Sin is the problem. But we know on the face of this earth that we can be baptized for the remission of sin in the name of Jesus Christ and we have escaped death. Man, you talking about a peace that passes understanding. You talk about a zinger to the soul. Ain't no high can get you as high as Jesus. I tell you what, if you get to the place where you'd fall in love with Jesus and get lost in Him, I've seen them get so high in the Holy Ghost, they can't walk. I've seen them get what seemed like just sloppy drunk in the name of Jesus. They're lost. They can't. They need, they're just, just gone. I'm going to tell you what. In my days of doing foolish alcohol, I have never gotten as drunk as I've gotten in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Uh, there's something about it. Whenever you get lost in the Holy Ghost, get full of His Spirit, just get, man, there's nothing this world has to compare to getting in touch with Jesus. Why? Because you're really escaping death. You're stepping out of all of the fear. You're stepping out of all the unbelief. You're stepping out of all the wages of sin. You're stepping out of all the things that your flesh is bound by. And you're stepping into the supernatural power of God. He has authority on the face of this earth over death and hell and the grave. He has all power under heaven. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord and He is with us. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us and His authority is with us through the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost. Man, we ought to get excited about that. That ought to be something that ought to thrill your soul. When you drive down the street and you see somebody that just looks like he's about ready to jump off the curb because he's so sad and overdone, and all of a sudden you realize how great of a thing that God's did for you, you ought to want to jump out of your car, put it in park, get out of the car, and walk up to him and say, Hey, Joe, this is Holy Ghost time. Do you want to look? You want to know what you're looking for, oh, Mr. Drug Addict, Alcoholic? Hey, I want to tell you what you're looking for. You're looking for life. You won't find life in a bottle. You won't find life in a pill. You won't find life in any powder you store it up your nose. You're only going to find life when you get rid of sin. Amen. I'm going to tell you what this church has experienced victory. This church has experienced victory. I've been seeing, man, I'll tell you what, just in the last year, we may seem like there's some dry spells, but just in the last year, we've seen how many be baptized in the name of Jesus in this church. Amen. So in the last four years almost that I've been here, I don't know how many has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. I'm glad that's experiencing victory. Amen. How about your house? You see, you forgot what's went on. You see, the reason why we become disgruntled employees is because we forgot how broke we were before we had a job. The reason we become disgruntled saints in a church is because we forgot where we were before we came in. We forgot the change in our family when our husband, our wife, our son, our daughter, our granddaughter, our grandson, whoever it might be, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and they changed forevermore. There was a victory over sin that happened in their life and they got delivered from problems and trials and, and distresses. I've seen them come to this altar and God heal them of, of all kind of thing, emotional distress and depression and all this kind of stuff and they forget how bad it was so they go back to where they came from. Why? Because they forgot from whence they were brought. But I'm telling you tonight, your families, your homes, your neighbors, those that have come in and their sight that you've seen them and you, some of you yourselves have received the Holy Ghost and have been baptized in the name of Jesus and you have experienced life for the first time. Amen. Well, I don't know, you know, this living for God thing, I don't know, I just kind of, something I thought of, I'd try for a while. It's because you forgot what it was like to be dead. I'm going to tell you something. I was transformed. I was changed. I was rearranged. When God got a hold of me, He didn't leave me the way He found me, and He didn't leave you the way He found you. I think somebody in this house ought to jump to your feet, put your hands together, and thank God that you have experienced victory over sin through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God has done it for me. He's done it for you. And I ought to be excited every stinking day of my life that I have experienced life for the first time. Hallelujah. 
Watch this. He shall be called Counselor. His authority is a Counselor. Which means to deliberate or resolve. To deliberate or resolve. I got a problem with Brother Daniel. Me and Brother Daniel, we got problems. When I go to the counselor, I present my argument. And Brother Daniel presents his argument. And then the counselor deliberates and ponders the solution. And then he resolves it. How many of y'all realize that at one point or another, you have gone to the counselor? I know I have. I have been to the counselor of counselors. Let me read what the scripture goes back and says. He says, the bruised reed will not break. Sister, how many times in your life have you just felt like you were being bent as far as you could be bent? The word of God says, the bruised reed will not break. And the smoking flax will not be extinguished. In other words, you're not going to run out of power and you're not going to break until what? Until He send forth judgment unto victory. He's going to send judgment in your perilous times. You're not going to break. You're not going to be broken. You're not going to be extinguished. You're not going to go out until judgment comes for victory. Y'all, this, this, is, this, is, this is stuff that, I mean, watch this. And in His authority shall the Gentiles trust. I was born again. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a Jew. You know what? The prophecy said that the Gentiles would trust in His authority. You see, I'm going to tell you right now, His authority, the Bible says He has all power in heaven and in earth. He has power over death, hell, and the grave. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess at Him. When He begins, Sister Knowlton, hallelujah, to deliberate on my needs and on my circumstances, He is deliberating and He's going to return a result for victory. He's going to resolve my problem unto victory before I break. I'm going to tell you what, I'm not going to let go. I'm going to keep holding on to some victory. I'm going to keep holding on to a promise. I'm going to keep holding on to the solution because when it comes forth, it's going to come forth of perfection. Amen? Amen? Hebrews 8 and 6. But now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. In other words, he is negotiating for Brother E.J., a better deal than that of Abraham. And if you don't think Brother Abraham had a good deal, you ought to be at Bible study in middle school this next few weeks when they teach him about Abraham. Abraham had a pretty good deal. Watch this. Y'all, we need to teach the world something. The world needs to learn something, Brother Hodges. They really do. They dumb. The world needs to learn this. World can go to hell in a handbasket if they want to. I don't want them to. I don't want them to, but they want to. But if they would learn one thing, Sister Johnson, then I'm going to bless them that bless you. I'm going to curse them that curse you. Man, I'm going to tell you what. If I was diving headlong into hell, and I want this world, world to be as good as it can get, so because, I mean, eternity is going to be as bad as it can get, so I may as well make this world as good as it can get. I'd be trying to bless every person of God I could find. Ooh, you living for God? You got the Holy Ghost baptized in Jesus' name? You living for God? Doing walking right? Being faithful in church? Being faithful? Okay, let me bless you. Why? Because I'm going to get blessed. And if we would realize the protection. Sister Savannah, do you know how protected you are? 
If anybody even speaks against you, God's going to push it against them. Amen. You see, this is where judgment goeth forth into victory. This is how God's judgment works for your victory. If the world understood how messed up they are because they're touching the people of God, they would stop touching them. You know, your little kid walks in the kitchen. How many of y'all have a little, bitty, little rug rat running around and you don't tell them, get out the kitchen when the stove is hot? They need someone to instruct them in the better ways of manners around a hot stove, right? Well, the world doesn't quite comprehend it. I mean, there's people that just, they don't get it. They do it over and over and over and over again. I mean, your kid's probably going to put their finger in a candle one time. After that, they know. But the world is dumb. The devil's dumb. He keeps the same thing up over and over and over and over again. You know how cursed the devil is? Why? Because he keeps touching the people of God. God's going to... You ought to recognize that there is a promise on your life. I'm going to bless them that bless you, curse them that curse you. I'm going to have judgment of righteousness upon your life. I'm sorry. Let me move on from that one because y'all aren't looking for a counselor, but I am. God has been a counselor to me. He's instructed me in the ways of righteousness, and I have learned better paths for my feet. Why? Because I have sought His counsel in my every move. When I don't seek His counsel, He don't help me a bit. Honestly. He won't help you if you won't let Him. You sit there, he'll, he'll sit there and watch you just run off in the ditch. You're not listening to him. He's been, you know, you've got to get on his frequency. You've got to get in tuned into him. And if you get tuned into him, you know, it's just like yesterday, I was doing something, I was in a hurry, I was on a computer, and I needed a number really fast. And I had, normally it's just like a hit and miss. You start working through it, working through it, working through it until you find it. Well, guess what? All of a sudden, I listened to the Holy Ghost. God spoke the exact number to me, and boom, it was perfect. You know, see, whenever we'll listen to the Holy Ghost, He said we're going to be blessed. We're going to have understanding. We're going to have knowledge. We're going to have an open door in our mind where He can speak to us. Amen. He knows all things. But He also, He's going to have the name of Wonderful. Wonderful. You know, when we look up the definition of that word wonderful, it means one thing. It has a one word definition with an adjective in front of it which the adjective is great and the word is miracle he is a miracle working God he works miracles in judgment unto victory When I need something from God, God works in the miraculous to bring about a victory over my condition. Amen. Some of you in this house today believe that when God moves in your life, it is a miraculous event. And you stand on the ready to receive the miraculous of God. Amen. And He's done miracles. And you have had victory. Watch the victories that Jesus brought about through the miraculous. John 2, turn water into wine. John 4, the nobleman's son was healed. Nobleman's son comes in. Oh God, my son. Jesus said, except you see a sign and a wonder, you won't believe. I don't care about that God. My son's sick. He's dying. Heal my child. Okay, he's healed. You know, when God gets him, you know what, we, we sometimes, God, God's trying to talk to us and teach us something. And we go away dragging our lip on the ground. Yeah, God don't love me. Yes, he does. Why don't you learn something while he's giving you a miracle? You know, he's giving judgment. Sometimes the judgment is for you to get your stinking thinking right. Amen. Oh, God, I need a million dollar miracle. Learn how to do more than a 10 cent prayer. Sometimes you've got to get a hold of the horns of the altar and hold on. Brother Dunn, I thought you said faith is all you need. Faith is all you need. But sometimes you've got to get a hold of the horns of the altar until you get some faith built up so that you can pray that 10 cent prayer and have that million dollar miracle. I believe without a shadow of a doubt. I don't care what your problem is. I don't have to go into convulsions and get in a corner and beat the wall and, oh God. 
I've been doing that a long time to get my faith where it's at. Sorry. Jesus fasted and prayed 40 days and 40 nights before he did the first miracle. Amen? you got to recognize that Jesus, did, as a man, he had to put man down because man is full of fear, doubt, and unbelief. And he was tempted in all points as are we. And he had to put the man down to get the spirit to come up. Don't you think that you're unlike he was? You need to put your flesh down and get your spirit up. That'll open up your faith and the miraculous will start happening. If you'll learn how to ask, why? Because he is miraculous. His authority is miraculous. If no way out, you don't see any way of hope, you need to recognize that your hope is in the miraculous move of God. That authority that when he speaks, the miraculous happens. Mark chapter 1, what happened? He cast the devils out of the man in the synagogue. Matthew chapter 8, what happened? Peter's mother-in-law was healed. I know Peter was appreciative of that. Luke 5, the incredible cat. How many of y'all would just like God to bless your job? You know what? If you'll get God involved, how, you want God to bless your job. You've been praying every morning? Get God involved in your job. Let me walk around my job. Let me not let me not look holy. Let me not worry about letting my light shine. Let me not tell everybody how great Jesus is. Let me, you know what I mean? You know. No, turn that around the other way. Watch Jesus. I'm going to bless those that bless you. Let's just say I'm, I'm on a job and there's five of us there and I don't, I, I don't want to push anybody down, but I'm going to talk about how great Jesus is. I, you know, I, I appreciate you today. I called a guy that was a you know, little Filipino dude somewhere over there, tech support, and he's like, Oh, hello. Amen. <laughs> I'm like, Okay, I, I, I can get it from here. Thank you, sir. He said, Okay, so far, fine. God bless you. That's the first time I ever had somebody say, I do that to everybody. Lord bless you. First time I ever had anybody do that to me. Amen. I'm like, thank the Lord. I receive that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I don't know who your little tiki hut God is, but I know who mine is, so I'll take it from my God. Amen. <laughs> Let me tell you who... You know what? All of a sudden, people st oh, start making fun of you. Well, guess what? There's a promotion coming up. Amen. God says, I'm going to bless those that bless you, curse those that curse you. Guess who gets cursed? All of the competitors for the promotion. Guess who gets blessed? Hallelujah. Well, I think it'd be best if I just don't witness at work. Okay. Don't witness at work. You'll witness. Because you'll be confused and you'll be confounded and you'll be put on the bad list. Oh, let me tell you who Jesus is. You're fired. That's okay. God gave me this job. He'll give me a better one. I just guess he's good preaching there. Luke 5 tells us about the miracle working God, the fish. Okay, Luke, John, Mark chapter 1 and 40, he heals a leper. Mark chapter 3 and verse 1, he healed the withered hand. Luke chapter 7 and verse 11, he raised the, the widow's son at the city of Nain. In Luke 8, 22, he calmed the storm. You know what? He couldn't go anywhere without miracles happening. He, he just couldn't show up without miracles happening. And you wonder why the Jews are in the base place that they're in right now? It's because those in the synagogue begin to curse him. They begin to see when he healed the man with the withered hand. What did they do? They conspired against him to destroy him. What did all the people do? They followed him. They got healed. He healed every last one of them. You see, when we get our understanding right, when we get Jesus in our life day and night, the miraculous, his authority is the miraculous. He don't have to ask nobody else. The, what does it say? This is his government. His government is the miraculous and it shall increase and there shall shall be no end to his government of the miraculous. He is a great miracle working God and if you'll get under his authority, the miraculous will happen in your life. Miraculous has happened in your lives. I can look at you and tell that some of you are overshadowed with problems and the miraculous hand of God has healed, touched, delivered and done all things in your mind in your home and in your family and in your body. The miraculous God has worked and it will never end. Am I getting too excited, Brother Daniel? Yes. Okay. I'll try to calm down. Yes. He is a prince of peace. I'm not talking about a piece of pie, all you hungry people. Which I had a piece of, key, uh, of, 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 of pecan pie the other day. Just got me plum excited for a good piece of pecan pie. But... 
There's two things that get me excited for pecan pie, good pecan pie and bad pecan pie. I got excited for some good pecan pie. He is the prince of peace. Don't know why I do this because you don't know. But how many of y'all know the definition of the peace? Good, I'm glad. How many of y'all want to know the definition of peace? Never mind, let's move on. This is the test to see if you're listening. Okay. The word prince means ruler. What Obama wants to be. Not what you carry on the job to measure your two by fours. He wants to, he has the authority of the ruler of peace. He commands peace. We'll get into peace in just a minute. But he commands peace as a chess player commands the pieces on the board. I want peace to come to Brother EJ right now. I want peace to go over to Brother Hodges. I want peace to go to Brother Todd. I want peace. And look, there, there, there's peace over here, and they don't need it. Sister Nolta needs peace. You come over here and peace go to her. I'm the ruler of peace. Sister, Sister Graham, Sister Shammy, bro, bro, what's your, whatever his name is right there. Brother Robert. Hey, hey, Brother Bissua, he needs peace. I, I, I'm commanding. I am shifting peace around. I am the rule. This is my authority. This is the reign that I My government shall never end. It shall increase. If he did, if he ruled peace in Alyssa's life yesterday, before she started texting, he will rule, I'm just, I'm just giving her a hard time, y'all. He will rule peace more tomorrow. Man, I feel like a dentist trying to pull out a bad tooth. If he ruled a miracle in your life yesterday, he's going to rule a greater miracle in your life today. Because his government increases. If he ruled over your house, Yesterday, because you were submitted to His authority, then tomorrow your house is going to increase because He's going to rule over it tomorrow. Amen. I'm trying. I need a good drink of water. I'm, I'm, this is, this is y'all drying me out here. Makes me wish I was preaching to a bunch of black people. They wear you out, man. They just, they'll draw it out of you. I, I'm, I'm being funny, but um, they are. I mean, it is what, they, it, is what it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. He is the ruler of, we have five definitions of the word peace. These five things constitute peace in your life. And one of them happens to be peace. The generic peace, the calmness, the stillness, the easiness. He is the ruler of that in your life as well if you're submitted to Him. He is the ruler of happiness. If you're not happy, you're not under authority of the prince or the rule of happiness. 1 Peter Chapter 2. Nope, not that one. Well, doggy, it's in here. So here we go, here we go, here we go. I didn't highlight that one. John chapter 13, verse 15. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, I say, verily, verily, hey, 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 I say unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Listen to me. No man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Where is, um, where's Halo? 
Halo, can you talk for me tonight? Oh, wait, well, Noah. Noah's a little older. He, 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 can you talk for me? Can you say, Jesus is Lord? She verbally said, Jesus is Lord. Brother EJ, unless something happened in that crib that mom and daddy, nobody knows, she don't have the Holy Ghost yet. I want her to get the Holy Ghost real soon. Amen? Amen. Amen. But wait a minute, sister. Did she just say Jesus? You couldn't hear her. I know she's kind of quiet. But did she just say no, Jesus? She did. Now, is this a contradiction in the Bible? Absolutely not. I love her. And she is under the authority of her parents. But until she gets the Holy Ghost, she has not submitted her life to God. So he is not the Lord or the authority of her life yet. Sister Alyssa, I believe you have the Holy Ghost. I hope you have the Holy Ghost. If not, we need to pray you through to the Holy Ghost. But I know you do. Okay. She can say Jesus is Lord because... I have received my authority on the inside. No, oh, I'm having fun here now. Nobody get mad at me. No illegal alien can say I am an American until you have gone through the process of being naturalized. Does that make that clear? Now, if, if, the, if the border guard comes up to him, let me come up to my Mexican here. <laughs> are you legal? Were you born here? And he goes, I don't want to go to jail. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I, I, I'm an American. Guess what? It don't make you an American. But when you get naturalized, you can declare, I am an American. Yeah, it would go the same way the other way. If Brother Robert snuck over to Mexico, are you a Mexican? No. You're, yes. Until you've actually immigrated into Mexico, you're lying. But if I am not happy, you know, the Bible does not, I, I put this on my Facebook post today. The Bible, why did I, how did I say this? The Bible is not there to take away happiness. The Word of God only exposes that you have been deceived as to what happiness truly is. There's a lot of people trying to get happy today. They're trying to get happy on a joint. They're trying to get happy on smoking some uh, poison down there, you know, at the, at, the, at, at the smoke shop that they sell down there, the legal stuff or illegal stuff. I don't know what it is. They're trying to do this. They're trying to do that. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to uh, uh, seduce a woman to make themselves happy. They're trying to seduce a man to make themselves happy. They're trying to steal hubcaps off a of sister uh, Red House's car. They're trying to steal your bank account. They're trying to do this. They're trying to get themselves elected into government. They're trying to make you do something you don't want to do to make them. But then all said and done, they never find happiness. They can't ever. Why? Because they have been seduced into believing that certain things will make them happy and it always leaves them worse off. The wages of sin is not joyful bliss. The wages of sin is death. But He is the prince of happiness. He is the ruler of happiness. If you want to get happy, submit yourself unto the Lord and He will give you joy like you've never gone. Watch what He says. Let me finish that scripture. He says, no, you're not greater than the Lord. In other words, you're not going to be able to figure it out any way other than understanding that you're under Him. When you realize that Jesus is your Lord, when you get full of the Holy Ghost, when you can say He is the Lord of your life, watch this, hereafter, He that is sent, great, uh, wait a minute, He is not greater than His Lord, neither He that is sent, greater than He that sent Him. If ye know these things, happy, are ye, if you do them. He is the ruler of happiness. He is also the ruler of welfare. Government has welfare. They're trying to be God. Bottom line, they want you to worship them. How many y'all have, let me back up, how many y'all has that God ever made happy? You singing the blues, you pouting. Tears running down your eye. There's a tear in your root beer and it's not for you, dear. 
and you open up something like the book of Psalms, like the pastor teaches you to, and you start reading the book of Psalms out loud, next thing you know, all the depression, all the dark clouds are gone, there's a smile on your face. Why? Because he's the ruler of happiness. He'll make you happy, happy, happy. Amen. He is also the ruler of your welfare. Welfare consists of a lot of things. Watch this. If he is your, ru your ruler, then he's going to rule over your welfare. Therefore, take no thought for this. Uh, this is Matthew 6, 31 through 33. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? You see, you need welfare. You need to eat. What shall we drink? You need welfare. You got to have drink. Or wherewith shall we be clothed? We don't want you a bunch of naked people running around. So we, you need welfare. Your welfare is in Jesus because he is the ruler of your welfare. For, verse 32, after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these. Verse 33, can somebody quote it? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Righteousness means judgment of what's right. Somebody done stole your liver and onions, guess what? God will judge. What did He say? You're not going to be starved until I judge for victory. God begins to judge for victory. I uh, just have fun here. Brother EJ, you can steal brother, brother Todd's liver and onions. Guess what? God's going to judge for victory. He's going to judge that you should not have lost your liver and onions. He's going to give you more liver and onions than you ever had in the first place. And he's going to take what liver and onions you have and he's going to give you uh, a spoiled cabbage and some bad apples. And say, suck on that egg. Why? Because... God knows you have need of these things and He's going to judge righteously in your life. I'm hurrying. I know somebody's got a date. Maybe, maybe Brother Raekwon over there. He is the ruler of health. He is the ruler of health. Seek ye first. Get yourself in line. Is He your Lord? Hey, ruler! King, God, El Capitan, I need health. And you will not break before He heals you. Hang on. Hallelujah, brother, done! I'm not making this up. I didn't write this. He's the ruler of health. He commands health. Amen. Doctor didn't command health. God does. I got Jesus. Okay. 1 Peter 2.24 Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree that we being dead to sins are you dead to sin? are you dead to rebellion, strife, anguish and bitterness and all of those things? have you yielded your life to God? have you been purged by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ? guess what? he is the ruler of health because if we are dead to sin I lost my spot If, uh, if we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, is it right for you to live in health or is it right to you to be unhealthy? Is it right for him to heal you? Because he is the ruler of health. What does it say? By whose stripes ye were healed. And if God healed you yesterday, God will heal you tomorrow, and He'll heal you the next day, and your sickness may get better, but His healing is going to increase because His government increases. Whew, that's good stuff. He is the ruler of peace. We already said that. 
He's the ruler of peace. That's calmness. That's stillness. That's, and when He calmed the storm, He is the ruler of everything that comes against what should be calmness in your life. He is that ruler. He'll give you peace that passes understanding. Your mind will be confounded and confused and upset and your tongue will be dung because you cannot speak and your ears will be congested because you cannot hear the right things and you don't know where you're going to go and you're, you're bent over backwards and your back is about to break. But guess what? The bruised reed shall not not be broken until he bringeth forth judgment righteously. Amen. He is the ruler of prosperity. He rules prosperity. You're not prospering. Are you being ruled? Well, God, there's just... I know you're the chess player and I'm the pawn. You know, he never loses a game or a pawn. You know that, right? You know, there's no, there's no throw... Pawns are throwaway pieces in chess. There's no throwaway pieces in the kingdom of God because when he puts your stamp on him, you are the joint heir. You're the prince. You are beside him. You're on his right hand. You are the sheep that he has and you're not a throwaway. Nobody's a throwaway because he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. Amen? Amen. So understand that if I will yield myself to God and allow myself to be moved and I will walk with Him, talk with Him, allow Him to speak to me and I will hear His voice and I will follow Him as a sheep followeth its master, guess what? I shall never be overcome. Should I be thrown in the fire, He will deliver me. Should I be thrown into pestilence, He will overcome me. Why? Because He will never allow more to be put on me than, he, than I can bear. As long as I am in connection with Him, He is the ruler of my prosperity. If he gave you five dollars you didn't deserve one day, guess what? The increase of his government will fall upon you. It'll go from five dollars to twenty dollars. It'll go to a hundred dollars. Why? Because your prosperity is based on his rulership. Amen. You know, I was preaching Sunday night and God talked to me after I left. He said, you should have told him this and he just quickened it back to me so I'm going to tell you now. We was preaching. What was the message about Sunday night? Use me. You know what? I'm going to tell you something that, that you would, each and every one of us would be wise to desire God to use us in. I want to be a channel of blessing. How many of y'all want to be a channel? How many of y'all want to be a channel of blessing so that the church can be built and outreach and grow and we can send more kids to youth camp. We can send more uh, uh, we, ladies to on a shopping trip. We can, we can reach new souls. We can help people and we can just see the church grow, 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 grow. How many of y'all would like to be a channel of blessing for that? God gave me wisdom the other night and I'm going to show you how He rules over our prosperity. I need one person to raise your hand real quick that wanted to... You're serious about it. Raise your hand. All right. Sister, I'm, she's up front, so the rest of you just, just tag along. Sister Red House. God has a design. And He says that if you'll, you'll make a commitment to being faithful to His law on giving, He will bless you. And He will increase you. And you stay committed to that through everything. As the need arises, He's going to find the channels of blessing to put into in order to get it to where He wants it. And He never says, I expect you to give everything. He says, I want you to make a commitment. There is a, we, we know what tithing is. Well, I'm going to pay my tithes. But you know, if you want to be a channel of blessing, you ought to speak to God and say, God, I only make a dollar a week, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. From this day forward, in a cheerful attitude, because I want to be a channel of blessing, I am going to give X amount out of every dollar from this day 
day forth as a free will love offering to the work of God. And God's going to say one of these days, and you may rock on with, you know, you're just, you're just giving a little nickel out of the penny, out of your, out of your dollar every week. You're just you're keeping up on it. God gives you two dollars, you give two pennies, two nickels, whatever it might be, whatever your personal desire is. But then all of a sudden, one day, since Red House, God says, the church needs a new van. And I'm going to look over the church to find to somebody that has been working as a channel. Oh, there, Sister Red House. I'm going to bless her because the church needs a new van. And all of a sudden, he just opens up the windows. The big old floodgates just open up and God blesses your life. Use me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. I want to do a work for God. He is the ruler of prosperity. He does rule over... I, you don't have to be used in that fashion. God doesn't have to work through you like that. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I, I'm not preaching for... Uh, but I'm going to tell you what, a lot of us miss a miracle that God would like to do in our life because we miss the understanding of how God works. If Sister Red House had simply said, God, and I just, you know, out of, I'm going to give a, 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 a 20 cents out of every dollar. And God wants to, has seen this vessel has been open and open and open. And she, God blesses her along the way. The church needs a new, we need a new offering plate. And, and it's, it's, it's $5. Well, guess what? How many, how, many, how many dollars would she need to give, God bless her with, in order for the church to buy a $5 offering plate? Well, God found a channel of blessing. Boom, he blesses her just enough. How much, how many, come on, some math genius. Tell me how many, how many dollars that God would bless her. If 20 cents, let me just make this up. If 20 cents out of every dollar came in to pay for an offering plate, somebody quick. Five dollar offering plate. Okay, for each dollar, how many, how many, huh? No. For each dollar, it takes five dollars in her pocket to get one dollar in the offering plate. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. God blesses her with 25 bucks. She does exactly what she's been doing when she had the dollar. And God blesses her. Next thing you know, she's got 20 bucks left over in her pocket that she didn't have the day before because she's a channel of blessing. Now multiply that by whatever it is. You see, if we are... It, I knew if I said something about that, I'd get... Because I, I, I have experienced this and I, have, I live this. I work this. And that's how God's blessed me. Because He's the ruler of prosperity. He rules over our finances. He is government that He rules over. He always increases. That is the Word of God. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the ruler of all of these things. Our welfare, our, our, our constantness, our happiness, our relaxation, our peace of mind, our health, our prosperity. He is the ruler over all of these things. I want him to be the ruler over me so that these things he will rule over in my life. How many of y'all has he ruled over these things in your life? How many of y'all has he healed? How many of y'all has he delivered? How many of y'all has he forgiven of sins? How many of y'all has he blessed along the way? I'm going to tell you what. Increase, Lord. Increase, Lord. Increase, Lord. I'll increase in you. And I'll let you increase in your government over me. I'm telling you what. We need to recognize that we are victorious in our life through the authority of Jesus Christ. Has He been victorious in your life? Stand and worship Him tonight. Lord, I love You, Jesus. I thank You for the increase of Your kingdom. I ask You to rule over me, God. I submit myself unto You more and more each day. God, the powers of this world, the fear and the doubt and the unbelief, I push it out by the authority of the name of Jesus. God, I want to be happy, Lord. I yield it to You. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Tonight's message should have been written down in notes. And you need to apply it. How many of y'all would like the increase of God in all of the areas that we just preached about? Increase of happiness, increase of life, not death. I want to get rid of sin. I want more sin out of my life. Not, not, I don't want less sin out of my life. I want more. I'm going to tell you what. When you fall in love with Jesus, all of the principles of the work of God and the doctrines of God become so powerful in our life because they flourish our life because we have allowed Him to become our government. Amen? I'm in His kingdom. Amen? I don't force God to come down to my kingdom. I want to go to His kingdom. 
You know what? When I die, I don't want to dwell in my kingdom because my kingdom is nothing. It, 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 it's, it's, it's already lost before I ever got started. I want to go to His glorious kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Go be blessed of God. Come back. Go to church tomorrow night and Friday night over at Brother Carrington's on Fairview. If you need some directions, 7 o'clock. You will be blessed. If you'll go fellowship, that's the Word of God. Do it. You're dismissed. Go home.